Silent Voice. Also known as the Shape of Voice, this teen drama starts off on a heavier note with lead Shoya Ishida in the edge of a bridge about to jump to his death. As he comes to his senses, we flash back and begin to relieve Ishida's elementary school days as a bully, all of which started when the class was introduced to new student Shoko Nishimiya, a deaf girl who recently transferred but was just trying her best to live a normal life and fit in. As for the plot, we don't want to give too much away because the real story unfolds from the emotions and the actions of each individual character and the battles they fight within their selves and with their inner demons. The recurring themes of coming to terms with uncontrollable transformations formed over the years of each character's experiences and how it challenges each of their own unrelenting standards of themselves is the real story here. The film isn't afraid to make you feel emotions a lot of other movies and stories are too afraid to touch. I hope you find the time to experience this one for yourself. When a werewolf man and a human woman love each other very much, they make cute, tiny werewolf babies, apparently. And then Dad gets himself killed, leaving one human parent to raise two tiny wolf monstrosities. Note, we aren't calling them monstrosities because they're wolves, we're calling them that because they're babies. Poor Mum is on her own with these little handfuls as they're constantly switching between their human and wolf forms. One of the children, Yuki, begs her mum to let her participate in school, while the other, Ame, is more interested in the forest and ends up taking lessons from a fox about surviving in the wild. This is a very emotional story because it shows the perspective of a mother caring for her children and watching them go their separate ways growing up. It illustrates an emphasis on building relationships and trust as they have to hide their true wolf identities from the public while figuring out what they want to do with their lives. Garden of Words is a short story about 15-year-old schoolboy Takao Akazuki. He doesn't stand out much at school and has a passion for shoemaking. The anime puts a lot of emphasis on soft piano melodies and it sets the tone for the setting and what's to come. One day Takao decides to skip school when it's raining and go and sit in a park. Here he meets Miss Yukino, a woman who's skipping work because of personal problems and he eventually forms a strong connection with her. Takao would always look forward to whenever it rained because they would both skip their responsibilities to hang out. The main protagonist confesses to Miss Yukino that all he wants to do is become a great shoemaker and then he promises to make her a new pair of shoes. Eventually the rainy season comes to an end and he doesn't see her for months but she's constantly on his mind. Yukino's tale is a depressing one as it spurs the main protagonist's emotions to stand up for who he believes her to be. Oh. Your Lie in April is a beautifully animated love story based around a piano playing prodigy named Kosei. He's a 14 year old boy who's determined to make sure no one ever falls in love with him. Although he's just a middle schooler, the light in his eyes has been taken away because of his mother's death. As opposed to his friend Tsubaki who sees a world full of colour, he sees everything in monotone just like music scores and keyboards. Despite it being his mother's dream to raise him to be a world class pianist, he's having a hard time coming to terms with playing after being abused by his mother and her passing. The protagonist then meets a beautiful girl named Kaori who ultimately changes his outlook on life as she challenges him to cope with the past and play music again. The situations portrayed in this show are emotional roller coasters that illustrate how you can overcome anything if you set your mind to it. This show does an outstanding job to keep you as entertained by contrasting Kosei's self-doubt with the positive support from his class. It's off with a rather depressing tone with phrases such as I hate this town and how it's filled with too many memories that the main protagonist would rather forget. He wonders if his mundane boring lifestyle will ever change and then he meets a shy girl talking to herself on the way home named Furukawa Nagisa. He offers her advice to go out and find her own happiness and that initial connection starts their uphill journey to recruit people into the drama club they're trying to revive. From the get go you meet Akazaki's roommate Yuhei Sonohara. Sonohara does a good job to bring in comic relief throughout all the emotional strings being pulled throughout the show with the relationships Okazaki starts to form and with his drunken father who treats him like a stranger. Despite these family problems, the anime is actually quite wholesome and gives you a sense of satisfaction when continuing through the plot through his school relationships and his new friend Nagisa. If you enjoy a nice slice of life anime with a strong sense of emotional self-reflection, then I would highly recommend Clanner.
Grave of the Fireflies is a Studio Ghibli classic that turns away magic and fantasy to reveal the gruesome realities of the war. The story takes place during World War II and showcases the struggle of siblings Seita and Setsuko who must fend for themselves in a world of firebombs and famine. From burns to beatings to psychological distress, Grave of the Fireflies shows a darker side to humanity as well as its light. Catch it during Ghibli Fest if your local theatres host it and be sure to know what you're getting into with this movie. Fellow snot faucet criers, please bring copious amounts of tissues because this one is an absolute tearjerker.